Welcome gentlemen and gentlewomen. Today is Friday. We are starting the weekend and for today we have another informative video trying to make it more clear, right? Trying to explain to you, to everyone who doesn't have the beta, for example, what exactly is going to be happening in the end game once you reach max level in the open world of Dragonflight. How much is there going to be to do? How grindy is it going to be? Is it going to keep you busy for a lot? Is it going to make it easier or harder to have multiple characters up at max level, you know, multiple alts uh, playable at the same time, etc., etc. This, I think, is needed. I think it's, it's a good to clear the air about this because I've seen more and more of my viewers a little bit confused and a few other players in the WoW community quite confused about the end game because many of you, many players, seem to have realized that professions are going to play a big role in Dragonflight. So upon knowing this, you followed up with the question, what about if I don't care about professions? What am I going to do in the end game if I don't really want to do professions? Is there going to be nothing else for me available? in the open world is going to be empty or is there still going to be you know activities and content to do for players like me that's why i thought it would have been helpful to uh, explain a little bit so let's start with the most basic of things available in the open world which is world quests of course so starting out in front of this statue which you will get to know quite well uh, in dragonflight because uh, it's going to be quite important however we are talking about world quests now, the first thing you will notice when we go over and we hover over all of these world quests, the first thing you will notice is that they all have the same type of expiration. It's either one day and five hours, all of them, or it is four days and 17 hours. They all have the same type of expiration date. The reason for this is because Blizzard is changing the world quests in Dragonflight. They are no longer going to be you know, on a one day cooldown, one and a half day cooldown, and then restart, reset. They are going to be bi-weekly. They are going to be like the assaults you have done, for example, in Nyalota with the Black Empire assaults in the two zones or the different covenant themed assaults in the Mo, for example. Those had a, a bi-weekly reset. They would start on reset day on Tuesday or Wednesday and then change on Friday night, Friday evening. So if you look at this, right, these quests expire in one day and five hours. Right now, in the beta NA servers, it's almost 3 p.m. on Thursday. One day, five hours from now, it's going to be 8 p.m. on Friday, which is basically just like when you used to get your bi-weekly resets. So the first change, basically, is that world quests are not going to be nearly as prevalent and nearly as numerous as Shadowlands or BFA or Legion. Even from my screen, even from in-game right now, you can see there is five world quests in the Azure span. There is zero in Taldraxxus. There is three here in the Waking Shores and just, I think, three in on our own planes. So there isn't really many available already. The reason why there are way fewer world quests is because world quests are getting supported in Dragonflight by daily quests. There are going to be way more daily quests available. For example, you can start looking in the Onaran Plains for things like camps. There are going to be hunting camps available, different locations every day, depending on where it's going to be. And they're going to offer you daily quests, just like normal quests, normal type of quests, giving you reputation and a few other type of rewards. Same goes for other hubs like the Azure Span with the Iskara Tuskar, with things more tied to fishing, for example. That's also going to be a thing. So there are going to be less world quests to do, but in return, there are also going to be more daily quests to do. Now, in the end, both the world quests and the daily quests are going to, are going to do the same thing, which is are going to progress your advancement with each of the factions. Here you can see the Toskar tell you already which renowned rank you have and what you can do to get bonus rewards. You can move over the Onaran planes and they can tell you what's available right now in the zone like completing the Shikar Grand Hunt event granting you bonus rewards you can go back to the Waking Shores with yet another quest hub for the reputation faction in the zone in case you are confused and in case you have completely missed it Blizzard is changing factions to have renowned levels in Dragonflight so the higher you go what a surprise, the more things you will unlock with Renown. You can get higher and higher, 
most of this is not going to be actual power is actual player power that you want to seek like sockets for example like the socket rewards or the conduit item level upgrade rewards we had in shadowlands most of this is either going to be profession based for example learning new recipes or being able to be rewarded with extra reagents when you complete their quests or their world quests or very simply just cosmetic stuff like cosmetic appearances for armor for weapon and then of course titles mounts etc etc that's much more standard so this grind so to speak of the faction is fusing in what you already wanted to do before with the factions with the reputations which is all of the cosmetic stuff all of the all of the extra in-game stuff like pets toys mounts titles etc etc mixed in with a few power-ups for your profession like for example getting almost all the way up to the maruk centaur can get you a renown 22 centaur alchemy 3 which allows you to get the recipe for exultant incense so for example if you're an alchemist and you really want the exultant incense for your recipes you might want to focus the maruk centaur first above any of the other factions the actual rewards the actual rewards from daily quests and from world quests don't really change from what you're used to because it's still going to be either gear, gold, or reputation. That's going to be generally the three biggest types of rewards you can find from World Quest. They're all going to be the same. There are going to be some rewards, some of the epic World Quests, the, the weekly World Quests, which will award you with Primal Chaos, this thing right here. This is going to be the, the main standard for the rare reagent for professions of the expansion. Just like many other things, you know, right now in Wrath Classic, for example, that would be the equivalent of the Frozen Orb, for example. So that's going to be the main thing you're going to be hunting for if you are looking over professions, getting Primal Chaos needed pretty much for all of the rarer types of, of crafts. But the rest of the rewards, the rest of the rewards is going to be quite similar to what you are already used in previous expansions when it comes to world quests and when it comes to daily quests. So even if you didn't care too much about professions, it is still very similar to what you had in Shadowlands in the sense that there is not going to be player power from world quests and there is not going to be player power from daily quests. Besides, of course, the gear rewarded, the open world item level gear rewarded from the quests. Besides that, it's not going to be much different. You get the reputation rewards, you get the gold rewards, and that's just about it. That's where you might get worried. You might be saying, well, but the problem was in Shadowlands that there were no other rewards and there was nothing else to do besides that. There are admittedly a few more things to do in the open world in Dragonflight besides some of the things that are somewhat like a one-time thing. For example, you have you have the dragon riding races available in the open world which yeah you can you know you, you can join the multiplayer the pvp open world races or you can try to do the the single player tracks to try to get the gold time and get your achievements for for that but you know that's not going to last you too long another thing we pointed out and seen already besides the camps that give you daily quests there is also something called the grand hunts it's it's a pretty interesting idea there's going to be multiples of them available and the rarity of the reward is based on the spoils color you see down there it's either white green blue or purple to denote the amount of stuff you're gonna get as a reward the hunt itself works very similar to what you have seen in the mo when you had to do the weekly event to defeat the big guy right you have multiple stages to clear before you actually encounter the final boss the hunt spoils are very similar you will find at the top of the screen as the hunt starts hunts available six out of six and those denote the different stages of the hunt you know you might start slow like for example tracking the footsteps tracking the trail left behind by the prey and then you start hunting for minor beasts and then some bigger beasts and then some mini bosses and then in the end you get to the actual beast and you complete the hunt based on your participation you get a whole bunch of rewards as far as i could see these things are always up and active there is often even multiples of them available in different zones at the same time as well so they don't really go out it's not something like a weekly or a daily event i have done multiples of them in the same day so these happen quite often now much like shadowlands and bfa and legion there is going to be a campaign right where it is there it is 
here are your chapters here are the chapters available very similar to previous expansion is something that's going to be locked behind weekly releases now unlike previous expansions there is not going to be something power related or something too powerful related to the unlocks if you remember in shadowlands for example plenty of complaints because things like covenant unlocks or things like conduit unlocks were all tied behind the campaign being released so you had to wait weeks before the campaign came about before you could unlock those things this is not really a thing in dragonflight there is however one main chapter that you see right here the chapter that's currently in progress which is the spark of ingenuity this is the one that is very closely tied to the professions it is so important that it's even its own uh, achievement its own meta achievement unlocking one of the things that will be very important for you if you want to be a crafter which is the essence detector passive you will get very simply it says you have a chance to obtain a bottled essence by defeating powerful enemies as well as by completing dungeons raids and other various activities on the dragon isles bottled essence is extremely important it is so important that the quest of the campaign for the unlocking of this engine of innovation it awards this bottled essence this bottled essence is what you transform into a spark of ingenuity now you might have heard this name before or perhaps the icon might ring a bell might seem familiar because you might have seen this before in many screenshots or many videos about crafting the spark of ingenuity is one of the core one of the main things you will need to craft the top level crafted mythic quality gear and it's going to be gated behind these type of quests as even the maiden of inspiration the lady we just saw in the statue is telling us when the core of the engine of innovation gathers enough power to begin another creation cycle, a new challenge shall unlock. So it's going to be a reward unlocked after however many weeks Blizzard wants. We still don't know exactly how often this is going to be available. So while the open world has quite a bit of crafting ties, the basic level, the basic activities in the open world are still more or less the same as what you have seen before in previous expansions the world quests with the addition of daily quests for the general type of rewards you would expect like reputation rewards and a lack of player power like we pointed out in shadowlands the ap of shadowlands no longer giving you player power this time there is going to be even less if you don't care about professions because you don't even get something like sockets all of these reputation all of these factions and all of these renown levels with these factions won't really give you sockets won't really give you conduit upgrades or any other kind of character power increase so i guess for now the simplification of what's going to be available in the open world is you can be quite busy and you can do quite a few number of things if you're interested in raising your renown so raising your reputation level with different factions especially based on which type of recipes which type of things you want to craft with your profession you should probably you know get ahead of time and start looking at which things you might need for high level crafting and then target a particular reputation which will award you with a particular recipe depending on the renown level or simply open world quests for reputation faction grinding as well as hunting the skill points hunting the profession skill points which will be available in the open world although those are also somewhat gated every week and won't take nearly as much grinding to acquire but definitely it will keep you busy if you are into the profession system purely because of the importance of getting the reputation levels up to get the recipes you want to do the dailies the weekly quest or the elite zone the group content in the open world of the obsidian citadel which will give you also rarer rewards that's still going to be quite good for players who want to get into professions for the ones for the ones who did not care too much about professions then definitely at the moment there is less content compared to shadowlands it is better the things that are the same between shadowlands and dragonflight are better in dragonflight in the sense that progressing your reputations progressing your factions is better in dragonflight you have renown levels it gives you rewards way more often it makes it easier for you to look up to your next reward because it's not going to be 21,000 rep away it's going to be 1,500 or 2,000 rep away because it goes renown by renown 
rather than going from revered to exalted. There is also going to be way more rewards compared to the rewards you used to get from hitting honored or hitting revered or hitting exalted in previous expansions, as well as a few other things available in the open world, like the Iskara Tuskar giving you more, more daily quests about fishing, for example, assuming you even care about fishing, things like the Grand Hunts in the Onaran Plains, or things like the Dragon Riding Races, or things like the Elite Zone group content of the Obsidian Citadel, but it still won't have player power, just like in Shadowlands. So, that is perhaps still the main the main pain point of Dragonflight if you don't care about professions. I think if you care about professions, it is an improved system. As I pointed out before, it is much better than BFA and Legion because it's not nearly as grindy. It doesn't require you as much to log in every day for the player power gains of Legion and BFA. And it's better than Shadowlands because even though it doesn't have player power, it still has more content to do in the open world and still more content tied to player power if you are into professions but if you were waiting for or if you were wishing to get some type of player power increases like for example let's do some world quests or let's do some daily quests to unlock some sockets to unlock some more powerful things some more gear etc etc then that's not gonna be available for now in Dragonflight. That was the disclaimer I wanted to have about the open world content of Dragonflight. Overall, it is similar to Shadowlands if you do not care at all about professions, even though slightly more engaging because the content is, there is more of it, it's more entertaining and there are a few more new things other than just simply do a bunch of world quests. And if you do enjoy professions and if you do want to hunt for professions, especially on multiple characters, then it's better than previous expansions, mostly because it's not nearly as grindy and not nearly as time-consuming compared to some of the more degenerate AP grinding we have seen in previous expansions. So that is the current situation we have for now in the open world of Dragonflight. This is, of course, still pending a few decisions by Blizzard. We're not quite sure yet. For example, it's not still quite sure about how and how many professional skill points you can gain every week. It's still not quite sure how many primal focus or concentrated primal focus you will be able to earn every week. So there are still a few a few questions about the open world, but even without those things, we can still see a pretty a pretty clear picture at the moment of how the open world is going to shape up. So of course, many players will be on one side of the fence or the other. There are plenty of players who are happy with not having mandatory content in the open world and being just happy doing what they prefer to do, like for example just sitting in Mythic Plus all day. Meanwhile, other players are less happy because they kind of enjoy this MMO feel of just spending your days in the open world grinding for the sake of grinding, and they will feel a little bit empty in Dragonflight if they won't partake into the professions. So there are going to be different sides of this spectrum of which I am not gonna get into for now as I wait to see more and more details from Blizzard about this system for the moment. Now, with this, I'm going to leave you to the rest of the start of your weekend on this Friday. Thanks, of course, as usual, to all of my Patreon supporters for uh, being a big contributor, a big help in what allows me to continue to produce content for WoW to all of you. And, of course, on top of spending money to support me, you can also support me in other ways, which will leave your wallet untouched, this one being liking and commenting down below as well as subscribing to this channel these are still for the moment completely free so it's not too big of an expense lastly of course for more social interactions and general help for myself you can follow me on twitter as well as subscribing to my patreon right down at these two links now we are done now it's time to leave each other and i'm going to leave you to the rest of your weekend thank you guys again for watching see you guys soon and in the meantime ha ah, the stealthy allergy is the worst thing. You start talking for a video and your nose starts twitching like crazy out of nowhere. What the fuck?